the mixed scholarship is one of the most prestigious scholarships offered by the Japanese government to international students. The scholarship program is composed of six types of scholarships offered under either the embassy recommendation or the university recommendation. Let us look at those ones. Like we said, the mixed scholarship has six types of scholarship under the government sponsored scholarship scheme. They are offered under either embassy recommendation where applicants submit their applications straight to the embassy, Japanese embassy in their country. The embassy will make the selection for students that qualify for scholarship. And then the university recommendation where you apply direct to the university that you wish to study at and the university selection committee will make the selection for uh, students that qualify for the scholarship. So what are those six categories offered under this scholarship scheme? First one is the research student. It's offered under either the embassy recommendation or the university recommendation. It's for graduate school level. In other words, students that have already completed their undergraduate degrees and want to do six months of research in the field of their choice. So it is a maximum of one and six months. We've said research for six months long and one year for the Japanese language training. So like we've said, six months at over 45, 54 universities, you said the university at which you want to conduct your research art, but first of all, you don't have sufficient lang Japanese language proficiency. You have to study Japanese language for one year. The fields are the fields, major fields at the graduate school level where you wish to conduct your research. The stipend ranges from 143,000 to 145,000 per month. And then the scholarship will cover all the rest of the costs involved in your uh, studies, including tuition, as we shall see a round trip fare ticket as well and then we shall see the rest as we go on the next one is the teachers training student so if you want to train as a teacher it's, this one is only offered under the embassy recommendation so at graduate school level in other words you've completed your undergraduate degree already the same thing is a maximum of one one year and six months so training is six months and one year for japanese language and then it's also the same 54 universities around japan it's the same stipend and same uh, benefits as the research student the undergraduate student this is for students that have completed their high school and wish to study bachelor's degree in japan it's only offered under the embassy recommendation as you can see here we shall look at the eligibility and age limits that are required under each of these ones so this one is five years in other words four years for the bachelor's degree program and then one year for the language training or seven years if you're doing medicine dentistry pharmacy or vet science so like we've said one year preliminary language training and then you study your undergraduate education after one year that is four years or six years for uh, medicine and the other ones. The stipend is 170,000 per month and then tuition and then uh, ticket fare included. And there is the Japanese student, the Japanese study student. It's also off, it's offered under the rec embassy recommendation and university recommendation. It's also under the graduate undergraduate level. You've completed your high school, but you want to do studies in Japanese language basically. So this is one academic year. So since you're studying uh, Japanese language, you don't need to do a preliminary Japanese language course. And it's a major in the Japanese language or a special training related to Japan, as you can see. Same scholarship, stipend, and then the other benefits as you can see here. The fifth one is the College of Te Technology student offered under both schemes, embassy recommendation and the university recommendation. It's at the undergraduate level as well. So that have already completed high school. It's four years, as you can see. 
including one year of Japanese language training. So one year Japanese language training and then three years for College of Technology training or studies. Same stipend and then same benefits as well. And the very last one is specialized training college student only offered under the embassy recommendation, three years including Japanese language. So one year for Japanese language training and then three years for post-secondary courses and then some stipend as well. So let us look at a few details here. <clears throat> we are talking of stipends. This is in Japanese, but to give you a kind of perspective, we can do a conversion, for example, for the stipend offered under the research student and the teacher's training student. If you go here and you say, to maybe dollars to give you a perspective how much stipend is offered under this scheme. Okay, and then this is not giving good conversion. Let's see. Okay. So you put in your Japanese in here. And then so this is almost 1,200 US dollars per month. So this is some very good stipend for you to receive per month to take care of yourself, your accommodation and uh, all your other daily expenses. And then for something for undergraduate, you can do a conversion here and you can see it's almost $915 per month. And then you get the tuition, like we've said, and then a round trip ticket is also provided. Now, we are going to concentrate on the embassy recommendation right now. For embassy recommendation, all applicants must take entrance exams. In other words, when you submit your application to the embassy, the embassy will make their selection, and the students that are selected will have to sit uh, entrance exams before now they are fully awarded the scholarship. So research student will do either of the two. So Japanese, if you have some Japanese language proficiency, if you don't have Japanese language proficiency, you will do one year of Japanese language training. So you don't need to have the proficiency. It's not uh, expected of you, but you will do the English language tests. Teachers training as well, Japanese and English language trainings. Undergraduate, same thing. Japanese is not expected of you, but if you already know some Japanese, and you have Japanese proficiency, then you can do the Japanese language tests and then you can now uh, be reserved or be exempted from the, doing the one year Japanese language training. But if you don't, it's not a problem at all. And then you also have to do the mathematics and science tests. Uh, okay, Japanese studies only do Japanese language tests. College of Technology students who only do English, mathematics and physics or chemistry. Japanese studies, if you have Japanese proficiency. If you don't have it, it's not required of you. And then specialized training will do English and mathematics, Japanese as well, if you have the proficiency. If you don't have the proficiency, no problem whatsoever. So these are the exams that you will do after you've been selected. So the first selection process, if you are included in the first selection process, now you're going on to the next step of doing the entrance exams right now. And remember, each embassy has its own deadlines for application, for selection, and for doing the exams. So each embassy will organize its own dates for entrance exams. So it's always recommended to find concrete information from your embassy. So we can look a little bit here under each category previous exams, questions and answers that were, were taken are given. So you can look at the previous exams and then get an overview of how the exams look like and how they are set and how the answers are included. For example, we can look at, uh, this is 2020. You can look at uh, exams for the research student students. They are here. If you go under the undergraduate students, you have all the exams here, like we've already seen. So you have mathematics, one and A and B, physics, chemistry, and biology. You can look at mathematics, for example, and you can see here 
these are the questions that were given previously so if you are preparing yourself for the exams it's always recommended to go through these previous exams that were given and the good thing is they will also have the answers as well so it's very easy it's very uh, good for you to convenient for you to practice uh, pretty well and uh, prepare very well for the for the exam so it's, you can see that there are around 30 questions for mathematics you can look at the physics exam as well and then the answers to the physics exam and they're also around i assume these are like 20 exams if i'm not mistaken so entrance exams you have a lot of uh, content here to practice with there are exams under each category depending on which category you want to apply for this these are exams for 2019 you can see so they are giving you exams from the previous years for you to familiarize and practice so depending on each category, just choose an exam under the category you want to apply for and then go through the exams and practice just like that. Each embassy offers certain categories of scholarships. Some embassies offer all categories. In other words, they offer from the research student to the specialized training college student. Some just offer like two, either undergraduate or teacher's training, or some offer three or so it varies per, per country. So we have looked at all this information right here. I think it's a lot very clear now. Now let us go back and now look at the eligibility requirements for each category. So if you're planning to apply under the research students, you must be under the age of 35 and a college graduate. In other words, you've completed your undergraduate degree. Teachers training under the age of 35 as well, you must have completed at least five years of active experience as a teacher in a primary school, secondary school, or teachers training college in your country. So this is for teachers with at least five years experience and under the age of 35. Undergraduate between 17 and 25 years and completed your high school. Japanese studies as well 18 to 30 years you must be currently enrolled as an undergraduate student at a faculty with a major in japanese language college of technology technology student 17 to 25 years completed high school and then specialized training college 17 to 25 years as well completed high school as well so those are the eligibility criteria now we go to the application to apply it's very simple we said each embassy sets which scholarships they're offering and which dates the deadlines for exams for application for selection so the only thing you have to do is come here come to the list of japanese embassies and consulates and permanent missions choose your country and go to the Japanese website, Japanese embassy website of your country. Let us take an example, Nepal, for example. This is the Japan embassy of Japan in Nepal. This is their official website. Look for mixed scholarship. So you can see here, this embassy is offering research students scholarship they're offering undergraduate student scholarship they're offering specialist training as well those are the three categories they're offering so under each category they will tell you the requirements that you need to apply the forms are also given you download the forms you fill them all the instructions on how to fill and submit and the fields of study that the embassy is concentrating on are given for example let's take undergraduate students for example for applicants from nepal saying you must be nepalese 70 to 24 as of april 1st you must have completed 12 years regular course education and you have 75 percent marks for natural sciences or 65 percent marks for humanities and social sciences the fields of study that this embassy is concentrating on are humanities and social sciences, natural sciences, 
and they are all categorized and detailed under each category. So engineering, biology, everything goes under natural sciences A, you have natural sciences B, and natural sciences C, medicine and this, uh, dentistry. So choose which category you fall under. If you're going for natural sciences, remember you must have 75% out of 100 for the total max, in other words, 3.5 GPA. If you're going for humanities and social sciences, in, in other words, courses, all these courses here and here, you must have 2.9, at least 2.9 GPA. And then the terms for the scholarship, they said five years, including one year for Japanese language, or seven years for medicine and de de dentistry or vet sciences. So the language said in Japanese language, so you have to take that one year language preparatory course. Now, application, they're saying they need notarized copy of all your academic records, proof of citizenship, notarized as well and a recommendation form. These must be sent to, they've given you the email address here, and the deadline is July 1st, 2022. And they're giving you all the details on everything that you need to know. Download the application form, notarize your copies of your academic documents and your citizenship certificate, and then send them to the address here by this deadline. The deadline for specialized training is or the same as well as the previous one. And the details are also given here. So this is for Nepalese applicants. Let, let us look at another example. Okay, let us go to all embassies are listed here. Just choose your country and go to your country specific Japanese embassy website. So for example, here, the interfaces are different here it was easily accessible. You can see mixed scholarship here, but here it is not. So here what you have to do is to go under culture and education, study in Japan, and then you are, you've arrived to the mixed scholarship page. Same thing here. They're offering research student scholarship. The undergraduate student scholarship is offered, but now this one is closed already. Like we said, every embassy has set their round deadlines for each of the scholarships offered. So this one is already closed. The research student is open, the, the application is open by this date. May 2nd is closes at June 3rd. And they're, they're telling you preliminary, preliminary results will be available by this date. And then writing the exam, remember we talked about the interest exams, the date is already set as well. And then oral interviews, the date is set already as well. Now, the College of Te Technology students is also open here. The deadlines are given, everything. Specialized training is also open. Teacher's training is closed. And they're telling you how you must apply. All your documents, write your document number. And then they are telling you where you're supposed to submit them. So that is the general procedure. Nothing much complicated at all. Remember, from the main page, go first through the major details of the scholarship. Look at the eligibility criteria, make sure that you meet these ones. Click on the application process. Find this link. Choose your country. 